surprised to the point that uh, for some reason online you know you hear people wanting more torque from their DRZ or their DR650 I'm like are you what huh how I don't get it more torque from a DR650 I mean what the heck do you want traffic this morning schools in all right got about a 60 mile commute in front of us through the mountains twisty mountain road then a short stint on the freeway and we will be at work hopefully only doing that a few more years and I can retire would be nice and they just ride bikes for a living living the dream anyway yeah it's been a while since I've done any videos it's been a scorching 110 degrees every day and I don't know about you but might be miserable commuting to work right not for the sake of making YouTube's I notice everybody kind of slows down in the summertime but in the middle of summer when it's hot as far as posting YouTube videos anyway Yeah, so this DRZ has JD Jet Kit, modified airbox, and a slip-on exhaust. So she's a little punchier than a stock one. Not, I mean, <clears throat> it's the first bike that I've ever owned that those modifications actually do something. And I think that's because you're mimicking the uh, what is it? The DRZ E model, the off-road model only, which made 40 horsepower from the factory. So basically I think the jet kit utilizes those jets and the airbox modification basically makes your airbox similar to the uh, the DRZ E. I think it's E. If not E, I will put what model it is right here. So yeah, she feels pretty good power-wise. I've I've been up in those mountains going up single tracks and uh, there's no lack of power, that's for sure. I'm very surprised at how much uh, torque it has down low. Surprised to the point that uh, for some reason online, you know, you hear people wanting more torque from their DRZ or their DR650. I'm like, are you, what, huh? How, I don't get it. More torque from a DR650. I mean, what the heck do you want? Kind of weird. Anyway, yeah, this guy just torqued shit vertically up a hill no no problem i don't i don't understand the need for more torque um the speed on the freeway is fine i don't know about extended speeds you know 70 miles an hour on the freeway i don't know where this guy's going i thought he was going in front of me anyway i guess not but we'll find out today how she does on the freeway I don't know that my battery is going to last that long, but uh, I have extra batteries, so maybe on the way back we'll hit the freeway first, right? But yeah, the DRZ400, uh, they make us what? A supermoto version, and they make a dual sport version. And they still make it. It's still carbureted. And I'm sure there's a million videos the, about the DRZ400, so I mean... Not a lot to talk about, really. That's not been talked about a thousand times. After riding the bike off-road and um, commuting on it a few times, other than it having a carburetor, I don't know why people even bother buying like a KLX 300. Um, for that matter, I, I mean, I, I, I own a KLX 300, so I can talk about that. But... I mean, a 300 Rally is a great bike, don't get me wrong, but 
it's heavier than this bike, makes less power than this bike, and the suspension is no better than this bike. So the only thing it's got going for it over this is for some people is fuel injection. Personally, I don't care if it's carbureted or fuel injected. I mean, we didn't even have fuel injection when I did most of my off road riding back in the day, right? Nothing was fuel injected. I think the first fuel injected bike was a GPZ 1100 from Kawasaki and that was a long time ago. And that was many years, you know, after I started riding off road and so on. Yeah. I like carburetors. I like having that control. I know people think they're finicky and bad, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I've never had a problem with a carburetor. You know, you gotta treat it right, obviously. If you're gonna park it for extended times, drain it or run it out of gas. Um, you know, and get your jetting right. And with this JD jet kit, man, that was like, just put it in and go. There was no, no tuning to do. It was, it was good to go right out of the box if you follow their instructions and not hard to do. A friend of mine bought a, a DRZ the same time I bought this one and he's done all the work to his himself and he, he's not a motorcycle mechanic. I mean, he's fairly handy, but you know, he did the JD jet kit and everything on his. No problems, bike runs like a top. So yeah, I, I don't know why people are afraid of carburetors. You know, they start hemming and hawing about altitude. Well, this is a CV carburetor. It does just fine at altitude unless you go 10,000 feet or higher. Then you might start to notice a drop off in power, right? I just don't get weirded out about carburetors. Actually to the point where on my Himalayan, I hated that fuel injection. That fuel injection was pure garbage. I took it off and threw it as far as I could see it. And then I picked it up and threw it some more. And then I used uh, a carburetor kit that, that's offered um, from a company in uh, the UK, right? They have a complete carburetor kit for the old 411 Himalayan. I bought it from them, put it on, and the thing has ran flawless since. It makes more power, starts every time, has never stalled. So, yeah, there's not many people can say that about their 411 Hemi that uh, still has fuel injection on it. Yeah, I think maybe the, the carburetor is probably the big thing that scares people away, but it shouldn't. You know, just uh, treat it right, it'll be fine. Millions and millions and millions of dirt bike miles put on bikes pre-1989 when everything had carburetors. No one cried about it. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, yeah, don't be afraid of carburetors. There's plenty of information out there about how to make a carburetor bike do what it's supposed to do. You know, there's no noticeable bog, there's no throttle lag, but whatever, whatever people want to hem haw and complain about, it doesn't exist. And if that little bit of bog that you might find <laughs> is impacting your riding, I, I don't know, learn to ride. You know, there's, um, I've ridden with a lot of people over the years and uh, we used to ride bikes that had 15, 20 horsepower, right? Old XRs and 125s and stuff, 250s. And even two stroke 125s and 175s. KDX 200. Those bikes weren't powerhouses and we had a ball on them and I, I knew guys that could ride the crap out of them. I, I don't know why people complain about power. I mean, unless you're doing some serious hill climbing, well, lack of power is just an excuse. It really is. But there's no lack of power on this guy. You know, 40 horsepower is plenty on a bike that weighs, what, 315, 320 pounds? So, yeah. Got the seat concept seat going on this guy today. Hopefully my butt will survive. My buddy, I talked about him earlier who bought a DRZ. He wants to maybe do some distance riding on these things. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I mean, we both have big adventure bikes. He has a big KTM 1250 and I have a GS. So why, why would we do that? It's all fun until it's not.
So yeah, I, I put the seat concept seat on here and I've been trying to ride it further and further just to see what it's going to be like to spend a day on this thing. I, I don't think it's going to be pleasant. But, you know, you don't know until you try it. The seat's great. I mean, it's nice and wide in the back. I can scoot back. School is in. Watch out for lunatic parents dropping off kids. They're the worst drivers on the planet, bar none. You do it, trailer man. I don't know where you're going, but you do it.
so yeah before we hit traffic um, I mean we've done a little bit of everything that you can do on the street today right on a dual sport did some mountain riding 45 50 miles an hour we did some freeway stuff even though we were on a toll road it wasn't free and some in-town urban stuff uh, this bike does all that just fine uh, it even does it quite comfortably the way this one's set up with a the seat concept seat some bar risers um, and off-road it's fairly a decent bike uh, I actually really like it off-road very comparable to my uh, KLX 300R which is you know strictly off-road in fact it may have a better suspension than that bike even though it's uh, 20 years older Hey look, looks like I found the traffic. It's supposed to be an accident or something, I don't know. They improved this road like 200% and people still crash. the bike still you know still measures up if you look at what else is available in Japan right now KLX 300 Honda 300s I mean it's it's no CFR 450 you know obviously that's the probably the king of the L version anyway of the dual sports from Japan for now um, But yeah, I don't know why someone wouldn't consider this over a, a smaller 300. Maybe someone with experience on both would uh, can chime in. I mean, I have experience on a KLX 300. I know I'd probably prefer this over that. Well, I know I would prefer this over that. But I don't have any experience on the 300 Hondas yet. But yeah, I'm glad I bought this guy. I mean, I needed a dual sport, I guess. Did I need one? I don't know. Did I want one? Yes. Um, something with a little more oomph and a little less weight than my Himalayan. Which is pretty much turned into a, what, I guess you could call it a boutique bike. Not really interested in taking it in too much difficult terrain anymore. It's just heavy. It's a lot of work, you know, if you want to go where I want to go sure it's a great bike uh, well I know it's a great bike on gravel roads and mild stuff but single track stuff it can get uh, it's a handful temperature light come on but uh, the engine sure gets noisier when it gets hot that's for sure 